All right, welcome to Flow Tricks. Today we are gonna do a follow along. That means I'm just gonna tell you what to do. It's gonna be less of a tutorial and just following along with me. So hit play, grab your chucks, and let's begin. So this is like a class now, today. I haven't done this in a while and I just thought it'd be really nice to, to, to do a follow along. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna loosen up our wrists. We're gonna assume that you're just starting a trading session. So by the way, do you like my shirt? Just got it today. I uh, was waiting for my son, he's been out of town and uh, stopped by and saw a thrift shop and dude, great score. All right, the next thing we're gonna do, we're, we're just gonna do a few basic stretches is we're gonna cry to chop our nose like this and then our other hand is gonna grab the, the thick part of our thumb and we're basically gonna keep our hands straight as we lower it down like this. So again, it's almost like we're karate chopping our nose and then we're grabbing it to keep our hands straight and then we slowly lower our arms down until you can feel a nice stretch. Now don't overdo this. Do it till you feel a little bit of tension, but don't do it till you feel a snap. If you hear a snap, you've gone too far. <laughs> but you know, I don't know, hobbies. And back up. Now we're gonna do the same thing with the other hand. Cry chop the nose. And I grab the thick part of the thumb, like underneath. I usually put a pointer finger above. And then I have a thumb. My thumb goes behind the pinky finger to give it more of a twist. As I go down, I can kind of twist it to keep control of it. And then I'm just gonna pull it straight down like this. And then we're just gonna hold it there. So happy 2020. This is the first video of 2020. Isn't that great? Um, all right, we're gonna pull it back up. And then we're gonna kind of get our shoulders ready to go. So we're just gonna kind of do these twists for a little bit. My New Year's was great. Uh, did a gig, was out of town, and I just got back. And uh, I really wanna do some new things for flow tricks. I just have to figure out what we're doing. But I thought a follow along would be a great start. We're gonna do some trunk rotations now. Ah. Twist and twist. Make sure you really twist. If you can't feel it, almost like you're reaching out but keeping, keeping, your, keeping your core straight forward, but kind of pushing outward, and you should feel it kind of in your back. Now what we're gonna do is just go a little bit faster, and this time what we're gonna kind of do is we're gonna take our hips, we're gonna push forward, so it's gonna be a little bit faster like this. Kind of the, kind of the hips serve as a piston to, to move it back and forth as we do this. All right, and then we're gonna do some shoulder stretches. We're gonna hold our arms out at nine and three, and we're just gonna make big circles to start with. Really stretch this out, like almost like you're taking your fingers and you're trying to pull it farther than your arms can go the whole time. And you should feel a nice stretch in the shoulder area. Oh man, I just hear things cracking and snapping. <laughs> and the other way, whoosh. All right, that should be good for now. Uh, there's endless, endless options. Um, today, so the first thing I'd like to start with, let's just go ahead and start with, if you can't do it, do figure eights. I'm assuming you can though, we're gonna do figure eight wrist rolls with the right hand. Good, and we're gonna go about half speed right now. So go ahead and just start with half speed figure eight wrist rolls. Again, so what's the point of this anyways? Why are we doing this if we can already do it? Well, we're basically, warming up our hands. We're just kind of get our hands reconnected with the chuck. Okay, now other hand, do the same thing. Either figure eights, if you can't do figure eight wrist rolls, or otherwise do figure eight wrist rolls. You're trying to get reacquainted with the chuck. When you're actually doing these kinds of warm-up exercises, this could be this could be something where you're not even thinking about it anymore, and that's where you have to change your mode of thinking. What I want you to do is when you do something that you've done a million times before, be completely aware of what you're doing. The thing is, is, is if you can do it without thinking about it, that means that you can put focus and awareness on the motion to create even more presence. Until you can, until you can do it without thinking about it, you have to focus on the technique. But if you can do it without thinking about it, then all of a sudden you can start thinking about how you can like, just create a little bit more energy and speed and even a little bit of extra rotations, a little bit of variety. But we start just by warming up first. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna start with the left hand. We're gonna do figure eight wrist roll into a rip. We're gonna do a figure eight wrist roll on the left hand. And then we're gonna take our hand and as soon as we go to a front to back hand uh, roll, we're gonna grab it with the right hand. 
We're gonna rip it up and then we're gonna do a figure eight wrist roll to the other side. Left hand comes up and the moment again, once we bring it to the front, when we do the front to back, we'll grab it, rip it to the other side and pass it back and forth. You don't have to go fast. We're just kind of feeling it out. Uh, I'm gonna assume that you can do rips and figure eight wrist rolls. Just for the sake of this video, if you're not able to do some of these moves, do an equivalent move or just focus on working the same move that you've been working on. So if you can't do this, just work on figure eights for now and you can get back to this later. Or work on your rips, just work on the back and forth rips like this. <sighs> okay, so we've done this a few times. Let's work on rips. We're gonna go back and forth with rips. If you're comfortable with rips, I want you to start slowly and then slowly add a little bit more speed. And what I want you to do is, as you're doing the speed, I want you to focus really on where your hand's grabbing so it doesn't fly out of your hands. Because you notice as you go faster, you really have to be a lot more accurate in order to get your hands to grip at the exact same position, as well as just to get it right. Now, if you can do this and it's still feeling good, then go ahead and add in-spin rips to it. And all that is, is we're taking our hand and we're moving to one side and we're doing the rip, but then we're catching at the other side and we're pulling it back and forth like this. And then, if you can't do that, just go ahead and just do regular rips. If you're feeling good, do fast rips. If that feels good, start working on choosing different points and moving it around until you're comfortable moving it in different directions. So right now I'm just grabbing random points across the board and kind of just going up and down with it with the rip. And that's kind of the play state. For this next part, I want you to explore doing a rip but in different ways. So for instance, we're gonna do a rip here and then I want you to do one technique and then back into a rip. So this is a play state motion. So take, if you need to hit pause for a second and just take the next two minutes, do a rip and then do a technique, like maybe a hand roll and then do a rip back and then do another technique, maybe finger roll, grab, rip and another technique. Do you see what I'm, where I'm going with this? Uh, but then you're gonna do a rip, so it's gonna be rip, technique, rip. Go ahead and pause for a minute. Work on that for about two minutes or so. This is your play state. You can drop it if you want. The whole idea though is if you have an idea that's good, write it down, keep it down. Otherwise, figure out what you can do. Rip, technique, rip. Give it a shot, go. Okay, I added two on that one. That's okay, you're not watching me. <laughs> you're working on your rips. Okay, so once we get done with that, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do three combos into a rip. So take three moves that you know. If you don't, and let's, okay, let's do this. Let's do one move, two, uh, two techniques, and then a rip. So start off like, for instance, I may start with, let's start with a figure eight and two moves and a rip. So figure eight, and then two moves, and then a rip. So maybe figure eight, throw for me, throw for here, and then rip. Figure eight, throw, throw, rip. Or whatever you want, really, just figure eight. I don't know. <laughs> this is, this, the nice thing about the play state, and that's what we're in, keep, keep working on stuff while I'm talking. The nice thing about the play state is, as you're doing these motions, the goal is not to get really good at them, but to unlock your mind to remind you that these exist. While we're in the play state, you don't, you can drop and you can make lots of mistakes. Just go back to it and see what you can come up with and then start over again. See, the more options that you can open up your mind, the, the more places you can go when you're in the train state or when you're in the flow state. So the play state is really important. Okay, so the next one we're gonna do is we're gonna do, how about we're gonna do a throw into a hand roll into a rip whatever throw you want. So let's say I want to do this throw. Stop for a second and think. And then we're going to go into a hand roll. So maybe we'll do a throw. You can do a different one. This is just for me. Like this is what I'm going to work on. I'm just showing you how I'm thinking. So I'm in the play state. Throw, grab. I'm going to do a hand roll, grab. And then we're going to do a rip. And then there you go. There's, there's a move right there. Boom. So that's a new combo I can work on. But keep going. Try a different throw now, you know. Here's a throw, whoosh, hand roll. Whoosh. Now you notice I added a little bounce. That's perfectly fine. Just go with it. Again, you're in the play state. There's no way you can go wrong. Throw, here. Maybe I'll do a 360 hand roll here. Whoosh, whoosh. 
And then rip. So now it's a whoosh. Ah, there's a bounce. But you get what I'm saying. Throw, maybe I'll catch with this hand this time. Hand roll, rip. All right, what about, hmm, here. Kind of a complex throw, but hand roll, rip. Oh, that was kind of nice. Or this one, throw, hand roll, oh, I went, let's try that again. See, I messed up, I wasn't thinking, here's it. I went straight in there, throw, hand roll, rip. So keep going, come up with more. If you need to pause it, you can. Okay, I'm gonna assume you paused it for like a minute or two, maybe five minutes, 10 minutes, really work on that play state. Here's the thing, you can, if I were to recommend something, get your own little cards and write down all the different things, all the different techniques, and then say, I'm gonna start with this move, I'm gonna end with this move, and then kind of come up with a bridge in between. That'll help you come up with techniques. Now the next part is, if you found any of the ones that you liked, really look into that Take the next five to 10 minutes to drill it right now. Well, not right now, don't hit pause yet. Take the next uh, five to 10 minutes to drill the techniques you were just experimenting with so you can get it into a combo. So go ahead and hit pause in a minute until I'm done and work on a couple of those combos that you liked. Hit pause and get them down and then we'll move to the next step. Okay, we're starting again. So I'm assuming you hit pause, you might not have and that's fine. That's kind of awkward though. <laughs> so hello again. Um, now you have a combo, right? You were working on some sort of combo. I'm not sure which one you were working on, but now what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to think of ways to branch into this combo from your regular flow. So here's an example. Go ahead and get into your regular flow now. What I mean by your regular flow is I want you to start moving the way that you flow without even thinking about it. And I wanna see if you can find a transitory part. A transitory part is usually you find a technique that bridges into your brand new combo. Because knowing the combo is fine, but you also have to know how to bring it into your flow. So take the next five to 10 minutes on whatever combos you worked on, and I wanna, now I want you to just regularly flow, play some music. Go ahead and play two songs right now. Play two songs, and during those two songs, I want you to do your regular flow and find ways to bridge into your into the new combos that you've been working on. If you can't bridge into it, that's part of the puzzle. That's the, that's something you want to figure out. So go ahead and give it a shot so you can find nice transi transition uh, transition points. <laughs> and hit pause, play two songs, and I'll see you in a second. <laughs> hey, what's up? You probably are a little sweaty now. Either that, or you're just hitting play and you're watching this. And that is madness. Okay, so the next thing, so now we have play, right? We did the train state where we're trying to optimize the techniques that we did. And then you have the flow state. This is a great way to train and always be moving forward. We just covered all three states. I know I've talked about it in the past, but with this follow along, now you have something. And this is how you can work your training sessions every day. So always have something that you're playing, something that you're exploring, something new. Always have something that you're optimizing because you everything that you everything that you play and come up with or all the techniques that you're learning but haven't like made great, all can be optimized. That means minimal minimal movement of your of your muscles. Kind of like an athlete when they run really fast they don't exert as much force as someone that's new because they've trained their muscles to use the minimal amount of energy. So you always wanna have a moment where you come up with new ideas. You, have, you wanna have moments where you just take those ideas and really fuse them as well as work on techniques you're struggling with until you can do it without thinking about it. And last but not least is the flow state. Now with the flow state, we have a lot of different options. And what I'd really like you to do in your training sessions is focus on a couple of ways that you can flow. Okay, let me give you a couple examples. One way you can flow is with complete awareness of your chucks. And so in this state, what I want you to do is it doesn't even require music. What you're doing is you're feeling the kinesthetic motions through uh, the chuck as it's moving through your, through your hands and through your body. And what you're looking for here is kind of just like this feeling of connection. This isn't necessarily like a meditation as more as it is an, an awareness because kind of like how you learn your alphabet is kind of a brain thing. The kinesthetic motion of movement through your hands and through your body requires a certain awareness that you can train if you put all your attention onto it. So a lot of times we just do techniques and we think we're too much in our heads 
it's very important to also know the kinesthetic, I say that word a lot, but it's just the motion as it moves through your body because that's what's gonna teach you how to do it without thinking about it. Another way that you can go into the flow state is to play your favorite song and completely lose yourself. And in this state, I want, again, get out of your brain. <laughs> the flow state, you need to get out of your brain as much as possible. The, the play state, stay in your brain, be a, be a mad scientist. The train state, when you're training, obviously you, you wanna be in your brain because you gotta break techniques down if it's not optimized. But in the flow state, that's where you throw it away. Now, I had a guitar teacher once tell me that like, I, I don't know exactly what he said actually, but it basically went like this. Uh, you learn as much techniques as you can on guitar, so when you perform it, you throw it all away. And it's so true in the flow world as well. If you can throw away all those techniques, and just let it speak through you from your training, you will have something that has a little bit more, um, more energy, more emphasis, more radiance that's more true to yourself. That's not necessarily saying that you'll have the fanciest tricks or you'll, you'll let, as opposed to if you were actively thinking with it, but it will, that is like a work on your presence as well as your connection to the art as a whole, regardless of how it looks on the outside. Once you introduce your thought into it, then you can like take it places and you can actively create a direction. But in my experience, most flow people are too much in their heads when they're trying to flow and you can see it. It looks like a math problem that they're trying to solve as in, as in terms of um, the expression of it. So I'm trying to get you out of your head a little bit more. So there's another way that you can also flow, which is the thought of an emotion. And in this flow state, Again, you're gonna choose a song, but it, you're doing this based on a feeling or a thought or an idea. This is very much like meditation where you might sit down and meditate over a candle and intensely focus the flame, or you might play some sort of meditation, guided meditation that goes through a very specific theme. And in this same way, you are going to throw out all your techniques and you are just to move with the feelings that go with you, with it. And it, some of it might look like nonsense and that's perfectly okay. You need to be in that nonsense in order to figure out who, who you are within all this. And once you find good pieces, you can record yourself, definitely record yourself. And when you find good pieces that communicate how you feel as well as it looks like how you feel, like if you, when you watch a recording, you can kind of see the, the, the points that like, this is how I feel and it looks exactly the same. Other times you'll see yourself performing uh, on a camera and you're like, man, it felt so good, but it looks awkward. And that's important, especially as a performer, if you're doing it in front of people, that the reflection is even, that how you feel on the inside also reflects how it looks on the outside. Now that's not as important as if you're spinning, if it's just for yourself, but from a performer standpoint, it's very good to review video to see where those key moments are visually as well. And then in this motion, you're trying to, again, it's kind of a play state, you're more in the play state in, to some degree when you're thinking of a feeling because you need to explore outside of the techniques that you do automatically, but at the same time incorporate them where everything is just this fluid motion and your entire focus is on this feeling or theme that you've created with each one. That will change your train state a lot. So I guess this follow along, what, it, what I was really trying to get you to do was show you well, how I train, <laughs> that's kind of how I train. Um, sometimes I don't always follow this. Like sometimes I have specific techniques that I want to nail out, but most of the time I try to come up with a new technique or something different, then I try to optimize it. And then I just go through my flow in general, or I'll just kind of go through like techniques that I, that I need to know to stay sharp again. There's a lot of different ways you can approach it. Um, I hope this helps though. And if you have any questions, of course, give me a holler. Otherwise, this is kind of a quasi follow along lecture overall, but hopefully it helps you to see uh, perhaps some things that you may have neglected in your training. Remember, train, play, flow, all of these states are very important. And if you, it's once in a while when you hit plateaus or you don't feel like you're advancing, it could just be you're just neglecting one of those three states. All right, talk to you soon.